This is Samantha Kuhn and Wendy Fox from Albany, New York. When, when we're, we're not recording Kurt's trip, trip report, planning an Albany meetup, or, or the, the next Geekin event, we're, we're going Geekin on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole Geekin family. Disney World Geeks, Curtis Stone here, and welcome to episode 445 of the Geekin' on Walt Disney World podcast. This week, Wendy Fox reviews a big family birthday trip and three rooms on the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. That's a two-night adventure, plus five nights at the Grand Floridian Grand Villa. I've been having fun chatting with Disney World fans like Wendy for about eight years now. And if you're new to the podcast, welcome. Started the podcast with my daughter, Lindsay, eight years ago, and we started talking about our Disney World trips. And then we brought on you Disney geeks to tell your trip stories. Our listeners are so positive, caring, generous, and they are experienced Disney geeks. You'll get lots of ideas and tips for your next trip to Disney World from their real world experiences and trip reports. We encourage a family atmosphere here on the podcast. Before too long, they were calling me the podfather. We'd love for you to join our geek and family. We have an amazing private discussion group in Facebook. Search for Geekin on WDW family in Facebook. And that's a great place where you can ask your questions, share your trip pictures and engage with one of the best Disney groups out there on the internet. We're also independent Disney authorized travel agents with Fairy Tale Concierge. Fairy Tale Concierge is an authorized platinum Disney vacation travel agency. We'd love to be your Disney travel guides. We can help you book your room, tickets, and dining reservations. You'll notice most of our guests on the podcast, like Wendy, book their trips or they transfer their trip bookings over to the Traveling Tierras. That's Mama, my wife Margita. And Auntie Judy, her good friend, my good friend, just email them at travelintierras at gmail.com to get started. Just check the show notes and you'll see their email as well as mine if you'd like to reach out to us to talk about Disney World. Very exciting. We got Wendy, our good friend. The Star Cruiser has already opened up just recently. Fresh back, she is telling all of her stories from her eight nights, a split stay, Grand Floridian Grand Villa. That's pretty cool. All alone at DVC Grand Villa at the Grand Floridian. And of course the Star Cruiser. But you got to talk food when you're on the Geekin podcast. She did some of her favorites, the storybook dining, which actually that was a very first time her and her family went on it. So that was awesome. Chef Mickey's And not the buffet, family style. That's a tradition of her her family. Beer Garden and Ohana. She reviews some of her top quick service meals. And also the Flower and Garden Festival. That's, you know, you may have heard Lindsay and I talk about this, but that's one of our favorite festivals at Disney World. The Flower and Garden Festival is going on right now. Our good friend Nancy Elizabeth talked about the gingerbread cookie and Wendy gives her review. She got, it's still there. You know, it's not just a holiday treat. So glad it's still at the German pavilion. Wendy did some awesome videos while she was on this trip. And one of them was her review of the green and blue milk. (laughs) That was, it was fantastic. Check out her videos on our private Facebook group. She did have a rough start on the Star Cruiser, but over an hour, we reviewed the Star Cruiser and answered all of the listeners' questions. Now, Wendy does a great job describing the experience without giving it all away. She's very careful not to give too many spoilers. She's got some great advice and some things you'll want to know before you try this adventure for yourself. Now, let's climb aboard. Chandrilla Starlines Luxurious Flagship Halcyon Star Cruiser. (music) 
Well, I often tease people that are part of the Geek and Family that they're my favorite listener. <laughs> Either they did something fun for the group or, or for me personally. And sometimes they go on a really cool trip that I'm, a lot of us are jealous of. And now my next guest, she is my favorite listener for sure. Because <laughs> she's going <laughs> to tell us all about the Star Cruiser, which just really opened up. And she's already been on it, and she's just back from it from yesterday. And it's Wendy Fox who's joining us. Hey, geeks. Glad to be back from Earth and, and ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, you are fired up to get your trip report done. You just got back, like, last night. What time did you get home? Last night. Uh, I think we landed around 530. Okay. I uh, had a quick bite to eat and got back. I'm like, look, do you want to do this trip report last night, this morning while it's fresh in my mind? So here we go. <laughs> well, you're such a fantastic member of our community doing so much for us. I always talk about the, the folks that are so generous and caring and, and fun. And now you've been on the Star Cruiser. So like I said, you're my favorite listener right now, <laughs> Wendy. Like you weren't already. Okay. <laughs> you were already. <laughs> then, you know, if you're listening to this in chronicle or chronological order, Wendy did my trip report last week, and now we're going to get do her trip report the traditional way. Well, let's start off because you were there eight nights, and who went on the trip? I was. It was supposed to be seven nights, and then there was a storm that came up, and I was so worried that we weren't going to be able to get out. So let me just tell you, it was a very costly extra night, and I needed to book eight uh, last-minute airline tickets on Southwest, all that was left was business select. Okay. So uh, eight business select tickets in an extra hotel ended up uh, uh, being a little costly add on, but we, it made sense because our, actually our flight got canceled. So yeah. I'm glad we ended up doing that. Um, and once we got into town, we just really stayed overnight in one of the airport hotels. And then the next morning um, we went over to the Grand Floridian, dropped off our stuff and we actually had an extra park day. Um, and when I was going over with my family, one of their favorites and, and John was saying his extra favorite thing was that extra park day. Oh, cool. That's yeah. I, and did you fly out, fly out of Bradley? We did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did because we had to get a We had to get a last minute, uh, airline ticket and we needed eight seats mm -hmm. and we needed a direct flight or we wanted a direct flight because with the storm, we definitely didn't want to change planes and everything in Albany filled up so quickly. Okay. We just, and there was not that many direct anyways. So we couldn't fly out of there and Bradley's the next closest. So we did, let me kind of start at the beginning. There were eight of us on this trip. Okay. There was my husband and I, there was my daughter, Stephanie, her husband, Kevin, and my grandsons, Liam and Logan. They are three and six. And then there was my son, Jeffrey, and his husband, Andrew. So there were eight of us. Wow. So the six of us went down the night before and Jeff and Andrew actually still came on Saturday and they did end up making it not on our original flight, but they did catch up. So Saturday night we were all together all right. um, and we were on this trip. And one of the main reasons we wanted to go is one, we told Judy and Margita as soon as the Star Wars hotel opened up, we needed three rooms. Little do we know the cost, but you know what? We did it. And two, it was my husband's 60th birthday. So we were trying to figure out when to go to the Star Wars hotel. That just kind of seemed like the right time to do it. Right. And I did want to ask you about the planning that went into this because I just I asked Margie to give me a couple of questions for you because, again, thank you for using the travel and tiaras. Margita, I know I asked her, she, we've talked about this a little bit already, but she said she spent probably about 20 hours on the phone with Disney <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure yes. with you too, just with a lot of questions and were there a lot of questions that you had and what were some of those questions and did you get them answered and why was there a lot of confusion? A lot of that was more on hold with Disney than I think talking to me. The first, when Margita booked it, I think she was on hold seven hours. Yes. And I'm, and I'm texting with her, and I tried, too. I had two different phones going, and as soon as it opened up in October, I'm trying, and she's trying, and she got through. I think I sent her flowers afterwards. I think I felt so bad that she had to be on hold for so long. I know. Um, but she did. She got she got three rooms and I kept asking her any chance there's a room upgrade, any chance there's like a better cabin, any chance. And she was huh. saying no. And then I added on, um, there was a capture your moment, uh, section that you could add on to the trip, which just 
was released like I think a week or two before we left. Yeah. So she added that on and I do have advice for that also when we get there. Uh-huh. But um yes. So uh-huh. the first five nights at the Grand Floridian were through DVC. Yeah. And the Star Cruiser became available to book in October for March. So it wasn't until October that I started trying to find a three bedroom and I couldn't find anything. I'm booking a day here, a day there, two days here, here and there, every, like I'm just trying all these different times. Finally, I got four out of the five days of the Grand Floridian. So I took that. It would not have been my first choice. It's still not my first choice. It uses up a lot of points. Mm. And although the location and everything was great, it's a really, for a three bedroom unit for five days. And this was not a value time. This is a pretty busy time because it was spring break week. Oh. It used up more points than I would have for a three bedroom. Mm. I did book that for four nights and I had a wait list for one night, which finally came through. So then we were in the Grand Floridian Grand Villa for all five nights. Yeah. Oh, very good. Well, that worked out. I'm so glad. Yes. And yes. Yeah, so let's compare because we did a, what's it? The three bedroom is the Grand Villa. We did one at the mm-hmm. Old Key West for Yes. The G3. And now yes. you've stayed at the Grand Villa at the Grand Floridian. Right. To say that. right. <laughs> that wasn't that easy. Can you compare the two? They're like opposite end, uh, opposite uh, ends of the spectrum. Okay. So the Grand Villa, as you know, at um, Old Key West is a little bit older, a little bit more dated. It's two floors. You're not, it's a little bit more uh, broken up. The Grand Villa at um, Grand Floridian, it's 2,800 square feet. Wow. It's big. When they say Grand Villa, it's a Grand Villa. There were six of them because they're the very back wall sort of of the square of the hotel in the um, at the Grand Floridian Villas. Mm-hmm. I did see one when I went on a tour that was on the first floor that was fully updated. Ours was on the sixth floor. It was not updated. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not complaining, trust me, because it was a great location, but Things like there wasn't enough outlets or plugs in the bedroom to charge things. Mm. There, there was just some things that still needed to be updated. When I mentioned that, they said they're going floor by floor renovating. No. And we were on the top floor. So <laughs> okay. um, it had plenty of room. It was three generous sized bedrooms, four bathrooms, a large kitchen area, a living room, a dining room that sat well, like the dining area, the kitchen, the living room, the dining area, all open. And it had 10 chairs around this big dining table. And then it had a media room, which had like a sofa and a couple of chairs and mm. uh, TVs in there. So definitely was large. And again, it was great. There was eight of us and we really wanted to be all together under one roof. That's, you know, with me and my kids and my grandkids, that's my absolute number one favorite. So <laughs> The location, as you know, is great. It's on the monorail. You can walk to the Magic Kingdom. You can walk to Poly. I mean, to walk to the Polynesian, it was like, you know, less than five minutes. That was really quick. Right. Because that's a building that's just for DVC. It's right between Polynesian and the Grand Flor- you know, the main part of Grand Floridian, right? Right. It's yeah. actually closer to walk from the villas to the Polynesian than it is to walk to Magic Kingdom. But the Magic Kingdom walk was short also. Hmm. We use that new walking path to get there. Now we just got news that DVC is building more rooms at the Polynesian at the Bali, yes. where the Luau used to be, which is in that same close vicinity. Right. That'd be interesting. Yes. To compare once they get that ready. Yes. So, okay. Do you want me to go day by day with our trip or you want just to do food or resort? How let's, do you want to do it? Yeah, let's do the usual food. Let's go. Hit, let's hit the best favorite food things. Did you have a lot of ADRs set up for this before you did the Star Cruiser? <laughs> well, we did, but then I ended up getting them changed all around. We had an extra day and then there was a number of people. So I think the only ADR that we actually kept was the one Margita booked for Chef Nikki's. I think that was the only one. Everything else just got moved yeah. around and changed. So our first bonus day, we went to the Magic Kingdom and we went, obviously, after we checked in, we really took it slowly. This was like an extra day. The kids were just there. We walked in. It said five minutes to meet Mickey. I'm like, let's just meet Mickey. And Mm -hmm. Liam had met him when he was four, but Logan had never met him. So, you know, we did that. And actually, I think it said 15 minute wait, but it was only five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we were walking around and then we were starting to do some of the rides. We did like Peter Pan and because it was still early enough that it wasn't super crowded. Uh, and we did um, just some of the 
smaller kid rides and the boys like that. And we really, like I said, took our time. Um, and then we went back as soon as the room was ready around four or four thirty. So we really were there maybe from 10 to about four, we went back. And then as I'm at the gift shop with my daughter, I'm trying to find a dining reservation because we don't have anything. So I'm looking and I'm looking and I find this, I find that all of a sudden storybook dining comes available for six people at like 525 or 535. And I'm like, yeah. yes, I didn't even ask anyone. I just did it. Yeah. That's probably a tough one to get normally. It was, yeah. it was. So we hadn't even been to the room yet. We had just dropped off our luggage. So I'm like, okay, let's go back. So we go to the room, we check in, we get our bags, we walk in. My grandson, Liam, who's six, walks in and goes, oh, this is really big. And the kids are running up and down the hall and they think this is like amazing. And we drop our bags, we get changed for dinner because, you know, we were in the parks all day. We get cleaned up. I said, okay, let's just call an Uber. We'll get there more quickly. So we call an Uber. It was like some white, you know, like, I don't know, green Cherokee van or something. I mean, it was not a nice car. So we walk outside. There is a white stretch limousine from someone who was having a wedding. <laughs> yeah. And my grandson goes, Nina, is that our car? <laughs> like, <laughs> that was like my, one of my favorite comments of the whole trip. I'm like, ah, no, ours would be, you know, the one, the clunker behind it with the, with the couple seats. But. Oh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so sad. No. no, that's cool. Yeah. So you got, you scored. Yeah. We, <laughs> Were you with me when I did the storybook time? No, you weren't on my left. No, I was supposed to be, but we left a couple days early, so we missed that. Oh, okay, yeah. Had you done that one before? No, I, oh. I had had reservations before. Uh, last time we had gone as a family, we had reservations for it, and then Rise of the Resistance came along, and we had a boarding group that conflicted with our dinner, and I had to cancel that. And then I was supposed to go at G3, and I left early, and I canceled that. So this is really huh. my... Third try, and this time I made it. All right. So what'd you think? Loved it. Loved the food. Um, the whole experience was really great. Like I said, plus it was our first night there. We'd finally made it. There was like a lot of relief on that part. We really in, mm. just laid back and enjoyed. And the food I thought was really delicious. I don't know what you thought, but um, the appetizers they bring kind of all together. There's a little centerpiece that has these three leaves on it that's kind of raised up a little bit and they put each of the appetizers, each of the three appetizers on there to share. And there was a, a wild mushroom bisque, which was my favorite of all of them. There was a wicked shrimp cocktail and there was a hunter's pie. Yeah. And, yeah. and I just thought that uh, mushroom soup was the best and they brought six little ones. And of course my grandsons weren't eating mushroom soup. So I confiscated <laughs> theirs. Um, and then when we were looking at the entrees, my daughter's like, I don't think, my grandsons are going to want, you know, grilled chicken. Could we get something? Do you have chicken nuggets? She goes, well, we have them at another restaurant. Would you like me to get them for you? Really? And we're like, yes, we would. So actually they went, I don't know where they went, if they went just somewhere else in the building, but they got chicken nuggets and fries that weren't, and mac and cheese that was not on the menu. Okay. At Storybook yeah. Dining. So they found that, which was amazing. Whispering Canyon, probably. Probably Whispering Canyon, yes. Mm. And, uh. I had the fish, which is delicious. Both my son and my son, my daughter and son-in-law had the prime rib. They really liked that. They mm. thought it was delicious. And my husband had the chicken and everyone really enjoyed their meal. They said that that was great. Yeah. How were the characters? The characters were good. The queen, she just kind of came and stared and the kids kind of got up and, you know, took their picture. Snow White kept coming over and flirting with Logan, who's a three, three-year-old and he kept blowing her kisses and then she'd blow him kisses. And he, she kept coming around and waving to them. I think we were there when they came around a couple times. And the way you take a picture is the characters stay about six feet behind you and you have the kids pose kind of in front right. with their backs to the character and you get the picture that way. And so it was Snow White and Dopey he had a great uh, interaction too with my kids. Like I said, the queen was fine. There was nothing wrong, but Snow White really went out of her way and really, um, you know, really loved, yeah. uh, you know, gave a lot of attention to the kids. And then they bring the desserts that were shared. And the one that we all liked was the poison apple, which, which was a dark chocolate. And it had a um, little sour center, like a little red sour center. Okay. And they brought a few other ones. There was some tarts and I think there were four 
four different ones mm. and we couldn't finish them all. And we asked for a box to take them home. So okay. uh, we, did, we did take them home and trust me, they got eaten another day. Uh, okay. I trust you. Food. You had a refrigerator <laughs> at the hotel. We had a refrigerator. <laughs> yep. So I think out of our meals, that was probably my favorite sit down wow. one. Okay. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. And a, a, right surprise, off a great surprise. Yeah. Well, you did yeah. talk about Chef Mickey's. Isn't that a family tradition too? It's a family tradition. Normally that's our first night where we all go to Chef Mickey's. Mm. But the way that this trip uh, evolved, we mm. didn't end up going there, I think, until Tuesday, which was great. Mm, okay. But we went there and normally it's a buffet. And this time it was family style. They said they couldn't go back to the buffet yet because of the characters. I don't really understand that, but... The character interactions were quite the same with them staying at a distance, but they did come around quite a bit. And the food was family style. And I actually thought the food was better then than it ever has been at Chef Mickey's. Oh, good. I mean, it was courses and there were some things that we liked, like the like the carrots. I mean, we all like love the carrots, a crazy <laughs> thing. But could you bring more carrots? And they served you off the small that. salad and, you yeah. know, it would just... So whatever we like, we just asked for more of, and they just kept bringing more plates. And trust me, we did ask for more quite a bit. And of course, the the mac and cheese was a big hot item with my grandsons, but everyone really liked the food there a lot. It's much better than it ever had been. Yeah. Tell me, can you remember some of the things that are on that family style? Well, I do remember that my son-in-law had prime rib again for another night. Okay. <laughs> and that was also something that he liked. I had the salmon. John and I both had the salmon. The salmon was really good. Mm -hmm. They had something else. I wasn't, it was, um, it had like a, it was, it was like a casserole dish and I'm not quite sure it was in there. Cause I didn't have that one, okay. but they probably brought three different kinds of salads out to start with. There was probably like three different kinds of vegetables. There was potatoes. There was a really creamy mac and cheese. Um, I mean, it was really plentiful. Mm. And in comparison, we also went to beer garden and that buffet, I actually thought the food at Chef Nikki's was much better than a beer garden, which I had never would have said in the past. Okay. So if that's if that's a maybe in your list, especially if they keep it family style, I, I don't know. I just think the food tasted a lot better. The way they were serving it was mm. hot and it just came out. Yeah. I really we liked it better. Judy had that same comment about Crystal Palace. Okay. When they when they were doing I think they're back to the buffet now, but she she they was are. Saying, yeah, she yeah. Really had a great yeah, we've had good experiences with the family style and the, and I've mm -hmm. raved about Ohana. You know, they changed it a little bit. Well, bring yeah. the skewers out. And I was very pleased. You know, the other vegetable that I really liked that I raved about had several times was Brussels sprouts. <laughs> it's funny. We ah. said the same thing about carrots. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we also did Ohana. Yeah. And it okay. was really nice. Um, that was after our second Magic Kingdom day. And the great thing was we just walked there. It was like five minutes. And it yeah. was um, amazing. The service was great. Uh, we checked in. It was like a table for eight. So we got a lot of um, family style dining and then i remember when we went g3 jeff kessler ordered some extra uh i think the um dumplings and so whatever we had extra was other band we we took back a lot of stuff uh we even had asked for extra bread pudding okay the funniest thing is we're leaving and we had like literally seven boxes of leftovers <laughs> <laughs> so we passed another couple yeah. that had two boxes of, of <laughs> takeout items and my daughter looks at them and said amateurs <laughs> <laughs> this is a great tip i don't remember them doing this i don't know that we didn't ask or there's just yeah well you know i it was really jeff that asked when we were there he's like can i take these pot stickers back and they brought there's very small boxes so when i said there's seven boxes they're okay. they're you know enough to fit you know a very small amount mm. and we had a couple boxes so anyways but we took that we took i think food home in almost every restaurant we went to <laughs> Uh, that was good. And there was bread pudding at night. And I can remember my son coming to me, does anyone have claim on the bread pudding? So I'm like, no, go have at it. <laughs> nice to have bread pudding from Ohana in the refrigerator uh, exactly. on a late night. Yeah. I, exactly. The two tips I took away from my experience with Ohana this time was one, ask for the sauces for the pot stickers. If you can, mm -hmm. the peanut sauce. I don't know if you did that. We remember? didn't, but you know okay. what? It wasn't anything that we wanted. Okay. And then the other yeah. one was the beef that they bring was a little bit well done. So we always asked to bring something a little, you know, medium or <laughs> medium rare. Uh, I would have to say I did try the beef. I'm not a huge meat eater. That was my least favorite. Right. But not only of all the food at Ohana, probably of all my food there at Disney. It just. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the other tip. 
Yeah, it wasn't really well done. It was red inside, but it just wasn't. Okay. I just don't think it was very well cooked. The noodles, of course, are always a hit. Yeah. Pot sticker is always a hit. The chicken was really good. The shrimp was really good. And of course, you know, bread pudding is my favorite dessert on property. So <laughs> that was all good. The beef there, mm, not so much. Yeah, definitely ask ask them if you know, if it, they can do better. I <laughs> found that out. All right. And then did you say beer garden too you went to? We did beer garden. Yeah. So you remember we're having eight people. So we really wanted to have restaurants that were easy to go to with eight people. The only one that we left off the list was Boma and just, we ran out of nights. We just couldn't quite figure, make yeah. that work. All right. And they're all favorites of ours too. I mean, storybook dining was new, but the other three are all favorites that we usually fit in, you know, one time or another. Yeah. So, um, so that was good. And then our park experiences, I was really worried that it was going to be crowded because it was spring break. Mm. but that wasn't the case. I mean, yeah. it was, really? it, it was crap. It was, I shouldn't say that it was crowded because it was spring break, but it didn't impact us all that much. We did some lightning lanes for the rides. We mobile ordered our food every day at lunchtime. And then we were out of the park by later in the afternoon, except for our beer garden day. We came home back to the resort. I would say by three thirty four to rest and get recharged for dinner. So we really weren't there late enough in the day. I think to make the crowds really an issue. Well, beer garden's always been one of my favorites. So how, how and, and you guys go there quite often too, right? So did it, did it deliver as usual? Uh, regular expectations. I, I think every, we always went there because everyone loves it. And I did love it too. But if you looked at the other three restaurants that we went to with those four, I would put beer garden last. Okay. As far as the food. What they, they missed something. Well, I think when we went for G3 before, when it was family style, again, I thought the food was much better. And I think now that it was back to a buffet, I just, um, mm, interesting. I just don't think it was quite, in my opinion, I just don't think it was quite as good as it was when we went there. Maybe the food sits a little bit longer. I mean, it's the same food, but okay. maybe I liked, maybe I like having it served at the table better, <laughs> but the food was good. It wasn't great. Was the band playing? The band was playing. Yes. Okay. Still no dancing. Oh, okay. You know, they did their regular routine, the, you know, the playing the, yeah. they okay. play the water glasses. What's the other thing they play? The glockenspiel or whatever. <laughs> they played that and they had the big long horns. Yeah, they had yeah. that. And that was really great. We love listening to that. And I think my kids especially were disappointed that they didn't have the dancing down on the stage for the boys to go do the chicken dance and all that stuff. I think they would have really liked that. Right. Okay. Did that cover then all the restaurants that you did outside of the Star Cruiser? We did because we just did quick service. We did our regular like Santuli canteen. We did kind of all the usual quick service. And let me just tell you, the mobile ordering was amazing. Yeah. I mean, we did it every single time. We mobile ordered. We said, click, you know, prepare. One of us got the table. One of us got the stuff. And you're talking about six or eight people at the same time sitting down. And that was great. That really I, worked out well. Yeah. We, you know, sometimes we criticize technology and other things at Disney World, but. I feel like they, you know, they kind of rolled this out properly, piloting it yes. and slowly rolling out. A lot of people didn't even know it was there for some time. We were making fun of people because right. they didn't right. want bubble ordering. And now it's it's a necessity. But yeah, I, I, every my experience is everyone I've talked to has been very good for the mobile ordering. Yes. Yeah, it was great. What's your top quick service then on this trip? Uh Probably Santuli Canteen. All I mean, right. I just love that. I usually have a salad every afternoon, like for lunch. I mean, it's just a lot of food to eat at Disney. It's just my way of trying to keep a little bit healthy and not overindulge. And that's my favorite salad. I mean, it's just, it's not just lettuce, tomato, cucumber, and chicken. Like it has a little bit more interest in it. Okay. So I think Santuli Canteen for sure is probably our favorite. I, I didn't know one. they did a salad at Santuli Canteen because I'm eating those <laughs> meatballs. Right, right. <laughs> Never yeah, noticed. they do. It's Good. And they even have the bobo balls on the on oh, the um, yeah. chicken salad, on the salad with chicken. So, yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, give me a second one. What's your second favorite? Uh, well, actually, we did Gasparillo's. I forgot to mention that, which is the quick serve at the Grand Floridian. Yeah. Oh, good. We did that for one night. We had gone to Hollywood Studios. We rope dropped it. We were there at like 7 in the morning. And by the time we got back, we had some pool time. We had dinner there at night. And then we had a like an, an 11.30 lunch before we left for um, – for the Star Wars hotel. And that food was really good. 
Okay. Everyone really liked it. Um, I think it's something that you can only get right now if you're staying at Grand Floridian. At least that's what came up with the mobile order. But if not, if you were at the park and you were just looking for a different quick service, like sometimes we've walked over to the Contempo Cafe, yeah. you know, at that Contemporary when you're there. That's also This is also really good when they had pizza and they had burgers. They had chicken sandwich. They had grilled cheese and tomato soup, which is no. what I got. <laughs> it was not as good as peaches and cream, but it was still good. <laughs> And, and that was another quick service that I would definitely put in the list. You don't hear anyone talking about that for sure. Awesome. Yes. Those all, I think all three of those around the magic kingdom resorts are fantastic. <laughs> right. And Kona too. You mean at a um, Polynesian? Yeah. 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 Captain cooks. I was thinking of. Oh, right, right, right. But the so. Contempo cafe has always been good. Well, you did some yeah. really good, you really strategically, logistically did it well around eating around the, where you're staying, which is easy to do because right. of some good places. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and it's just, especially because we wanted to come back in the afternoon. Like I said, the only day we didn't come back was our Epcot day. We decided to go a little bit later and stay. And then we had like a five o'clock dinner reservation. Probably was the hardest day with the boys at dinner. They were actually pretty good at dinner most of the time at that time. I think they were a little bit more rambunctious. I don't think there was as much at Epcot that they that kept their interest, although we did take them on the playground. Okay. Um, they did play in that for a while, and we did um, take them to the aquarium, and we happened to get where the manatees were being fed. and So we did a couple of other like kid things for them, but and my husband and I took them so my daughter and son-in-law could go off and, and – try some of the food and drinking they wanted to drink around the world so we took the boys yeah i love the flower and garden festival it's one of my favorite and yes any any special things for the flower and garden that you enjoyed yes i'm looking at my notes right now so we went a little bit later so we had lunch there so john and i split a few dishes we split the seared velasso salmon with farro risotto and micro herbs. Mm -hmm. um, we split the seared scallops with French green beans, butter potatoes, brown butter vinaigrette, and apple with smoked bacon. Those two were excellent. Yeah. I would definitely have those. We also got the beef tenderloin tips with mushroom bordeaux sauce and whipped potatoes. I would definitely not get that. <laughs> I think because Canada had the um, filet sandwich that was so good, we decided to have the beef. None of us like that. Okay. Um, and my husband's favorite food of all was the grilled, no, what was it? Grip, let's see, griddled maple pound cake with warm peach compote and sweet corn gelato. That was his absolute favorite of all that pot. It was a really good, sweet dessert. I got oh. like one taste of it. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't let you have too much of that one. No. <laughs> and my two. daughter liked <laughs> Like the orange sunshine wine slushy from the citrus blossom. Ooh, that sounds that good. was yeah. that was her favorite. And then she said she also tried some hard cider and they they had like a couple hours without the boys, so they really tried to to make the most of it. But those were our favorites. And also when we were in Epcot, Nancy Elizabeth had posted, Can you try the gingerbread cookie at in Germany? <laughs> so I said that I would. And now Kurt, you know that my desserts that I like are normally chocolate desserts and this was not chocolate or but i bought pudding. it right or bread pudding <laughs> i bought it 10 out of 10 oh. nancy was 100 percent right 10 out of 10 it's like i just want to take a little taste <laughs> yay <laughs> i was gonna take a little taste and then next i took a little bit another taste and then i took another taste and before i knew it half the cookie was gone <laughs> that was really good so nancy elizabeth 10 out of 10 for the oatmeal uh, she knows her cookies and she, that was one that we thought was going to only be a, like christmas time gingerbread right it's right, and right. what's the middle what's the it's a big it's a huge thing right this has got it's, it's like two cookies with a cream center or something. correct correct it's like some maple deliciousness i, I don't know <laughs> it just it all works together icing. it's like a gingerbread cookie uh, yeah oh no there wasn't icing on it yeah. it was just two cookies and then the frosting in the middle the frosting um, but was the good is, well, it wasn't sweet. I didn't really like a lot of really sweet frostings. And this was yeah. just, it was flavorful without being too sweet. And like I said, you just had a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more. And then it, it was Did gone. Did you eat the whole thing? Not in this one day. I had half one day and then I had half the other day. <laughs> okay. But I did eat it eventually. <laughs> it's, so. it's big enough to save for later. And Deirdre Watts said, don't forget to mobile order. And I, yes, I did mobile order it. And there was a big long line of people getting to the bakery. I just went right in. I got my cookie and I left. Yeah, that's in the German bakery where all the caramel is, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. 
Good to yes. know. Then, we, then we're thinking it's going to stick around for a while. Uh, it was very good. I would definitely get that again. It would yeah. be good to have another person so you didn't eat the whole. I mean, I did have half one day and half another, but that was still that was still a lot. It was a big cookie. It's going to be on my must do list. Well, while you're talking about your <laughs> things that you did for the first time, yes. I loved all the videos you did. So thank you so much. We were talking about on the Zoom call, you were asking people, you know, do you want to see videos from Star Cruiser? You know, do you want to get spoilers right. and all this stuff? And we were all like, just go for it. And yep. one of my favorite videos you did of several, it was fun to see you. you I think you'd make a, a great vlogger, actually, Wendy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like... <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's wondering about the technology she's is, <laughs> but uh, you did a fantastic job and my favorite one was the blue green milk review <laughs> <laughs> is that the first time you ever had blue or green milk in star wars land it is i you know what i just never really wanted to try it and i was on the star cruiser and they you know it's we'll get into a little bit more about what it is but there are these machines that are there that have the blue milk and the green milk all day you know so i'm like okay <laughs> like a cruise i'm here this right i'm like it, it was totally like a cruise i'm like okay you know what now's the time to try it and i think it was late in the afternoon and my grandkids were taking a rest and i think my husband was taking a rest and i had like a little bit of time on my hands i'm like i went to try it i'm like okay i'm gonna record this while i try i think it was a minute so uh, how glad long, I came out. how'd you hold the camera while you're doing your I just held it in my hand. I had I held it in my left hand and yeah. And, you, and I well drank done. milk with my right hand. <laughs> well, what was the outcome of the blue and green milk? Can you can you re, redo your review? <laughs> uh I was not a fan of either one. <laughs> the first one I thought, okay, well, I just really don't like this one. Maybe I'll like the other one. And then I think I liked I didn't like the other one either. And I think I made a funny face because someone had posted your face at it all. <laughs> I did not like them. You're so polite about it too. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, very good. That was so such a good video. Go out to our private yeah. Facebook group. Check out Wendy's videos. She did a fantastic job. Well, you know, one of the things I always, you know, you gotta have a must do list when you're going down to Disney World, I think. And you go quite a bit. Was there anything something new you wanted to do? I mean, you just we just went in February, but right. was there anything besides the Star Cruiser? <laughs> well, yeah, we'll get into that. I don't think there was anything. Um, I mean, this was a very different trip than G3 because this was a family trip with eight people. Right. So our priorities were doing things together as a group of eight. Yeah. And we made sure we had dinner together every night. I mean, sometimes we would go off on our own. So I don't think there was anything really um, that we did this time that we hadn't done before other than my daughter stephanie and her husband kevin it was their first time in galaxy's edge oh wow so they had not been to galaxy's edge before so the hollywood studios day we were, we actually rope dropped it because it was supposed to rain and thunderstorm later in the day but you know florida actually never came and mm. didn't happen but mm. we got there you know like it was dark out when we walked in and started doing the rides and that was their first time at galaxy's edge yeah so we think? went the day before dark cruiser oh they loved it mm. they loved it so is your and family a big Star Wars group? All of fans? our families, yes, yeah. yes. You've been teaching the grandkids, and they've been getting into it. Kurt, I bet I can put you, match you up with Liam and or Logan, who's three, and I can guarantee you that they would know more character names than you do. Awesome. Guarantee it. Yeah, well, I got this thing. I got to go to work every day, so I don't have <laughs> I don't have all day to play on Star Wars things. <laughs> there you go. I'm just saying they're both they're yeah. right in there. I knew that so, about your family. When the idea came up for Star Wars Hotel, and I think that's when I really first knew Judy, and I think she was the one I said, "Can you put us on the list to book three of these rooms?" And she goes, "Yeah." I think that was literally three years ago. <laughs> um, we didn't really even know what it was. We didn't. I thought it might've been a star Wars themed hotel. And if that is what you were thinking, just like we were, that is a star Wars themed hotel. That is incorrect. It is okay. a much bigger experience than just that. And we found out and we'll tell you about it when we're ready for the star Wars part, but it's, it's definitely not just a star Wars themed hotel. Well, I think we're ready. We've teased okay. the audience long enough. Why okay. Do you, do you, how do you want to do this? Do you want to give me a, a little blow by blow of what you did. Cause I've got audience 
questions that we got from our private Facebook group. We got quite a few questions for you. I can save those for the end. Yeah, why don't I go kind of chronologically what happened and then you can ask me those questions at the end. Is that yeah. work for you? I think one thing I wanted to cover too, and we want to give people an idea because this is new for Disney. And Correct. I had this feeling from talking to Margita that they're, you know, they weren't always given out information that was on the website wasn't totally correct. I think one of the confusions was how were you going to get to the, from the Grand Floridian over to, I don't even know where this hotel is because it's hidden, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it is hidden. And when you look at it from the outside, it looks like a warehouse. <laughs> I mean, there's, unassuming, there's, yeah. I mean, unassuming, yes. And other than it had the little sign that I think we took our family picture in front of, that was really the only thing that, told you that it was a Star Cruiser Hotel. Mm. So I guess I'll start off with our transfer from the Grand Floridian to check into the Star Wars Hotel was a nightmare. <laughs> My daughter called it a train wreck. How come? We were in line so long and we were so hot and we were so tired. And I just said, you know, we don't have to do this. There's other hotels we can go to. You know, we can just, and we were literally considering not going in. And a cast member, I think, heard us and they actually helped us after that. We're like, I'm like, you know, we have to do this. We have three rooms here. This is supposed to be a great experience. If you know, we were just all so frustrated. So, it, so there was a long wait just to get in. Yes. So oh, the first wow. thing is grand Floridian was great. They were like, we're going to arrange your mirrors taxis for you. 1215. We need two of them to get us over there. Okay. Disney's going to pay for the transfers. They, the, the taxi drivers get a voucher. Okay. So we go, we, we said, okay, we need bell service to help us with our bags at 12 o'clock, 12, 15. I get it all arranged. You know what a planner I am, Kurt. I do. So bell services doesn't come, you know, they're just, I'm sure late getting there. I go down to get the car. There's one of the vans that were there. I said, okay, we're just a little bit late getting our stuff. The guy waited for a few minutes and he left. Wow. So then my son and a uh, son-in-law came with their bags. They had two of their bags. And if I, they were just a few minutes earlier. I could have at least sent them over. It just took a long time to get our bags down and to get the um, cars and to get over there. So that took 40 minutes. And we were standing outside. It's hot. You know, Florida, it's yeah. like hot. It's 90 degrees. We have, we're having our stuff. We get there at 1240. There's a million people. Everyone's in this long line. Now, I will say we were greeted by a cast member. They took our luggage immediately. They tagged them right there and they whisked off our luggage and they told us to go get in line. It will be a little bit for us to check in. Check in starts at one o'clock. So this is 1240. We were still in that line at two o'clock. Wow. It's hot. It's hot. There are more and more people coming. You hardly see the line moving. It was about 10 of two that my daughter and I are like, we're done. Thank God we had a snack at the Grand Floridian yeah. around 1130 because we were hot. We were tired. They were handing out some water bottles. We never got any. Then finally it's like, you know, we don't have to do, we don't have to stay anymore. We were all very frustrated. Whoa, finally a cast member came. Then this happens every time they load the star cruiser. Well, I don't know, but I do know that I got a survey from Disney and that's going to be top of my list. Like it's just sure. ridiculous when they check people in, you have to go through security. That was fine, but you can only fit 12 to 15 people in this transport to go to the hotel. Okay. So they only taking that many people at a time and you go there, you have to get your magic band and you have to get your data pad. And there's a data pad for each person. So even a three-year-old and a six-year-old got a data pad and the data pads are iPhones. So those have to be signed out to you. You have to get your magic bands, which were super cool. But those are all done between that 1240 to two o'clock time. That took about 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. And you're just waiting to get in. And so I know Glenn Kessler's not going to listen to this until after um, he goes, but I told him, get there at like two o'clock. There's no reason just stand there. Everyone wants to get there early and get in there and they have a lunch buffet from one to four, but they didn't even start letting people in until almost one thirty. But you're in the hot sun the whole time. You couldn't even get, yes. get inside Go. There's nowhere to correct. There's no, yeah. there's no inside. Wow. You are outside. There's a little bit of an overhang. So, but it was a warm day and that, and we had been outside since 12 o'clock. We were trying to get the transfer. So, so lesson learned here is don't go, go later. Yeah. Don't go at one o'clock. Did they I mean they moved right along at two o'clock? Like, you're well, saying when we, 
when we uh, were not happy with this, a cast member came and took me out of one and my daughter. So we had to go and use the restroom. We had the two boys. We brought them with us. And then they pulled us aside and we're like, we're like, look, this is ridiculous. We didn't really even want to go here anymore. And they brought us a line. They had us go to security and they, we did cut the line a little bit. Right. We did. Wow. And then I said, you know, there's two more, like my, I was like, we have three more people in our party. So then they went and got them and they brought us in and they could tell that we were just, you know, we had had it. Wow. And, All right. Um, so rough start, rough start, very rough start, but we got our match bands. We got our communicating units. And from then the gentleman who took us was very lovely. We did have three rooms in a row, which is what I asked Margita for. I wanted our rooms to be together. When you walk, when you go through your, the transport, it's very similar to if you've gone to the space 220. Yeah. Experience, restaurant, restaurant and you're, yeah. you're in that right it's kind of like that a very similar transport you go out the other side you are in this atrium which is very large i think i had shown pictures of it in the video it had benches kind of in the middle it's very open very high ceilings it had these little catwalk areas at the top you kind of get there and are pulled off to a side with one of the cast members and you they make sure they know your room number and all this then they point out to you some of the features off the atrium is the bridge which is where you go to get bridge training and learn how to control the star cruiser when you yeah. drive, when it's your turn. <laughs> um, there's a, a whole water station, which I'll get up to, which I absolutely loved. There is a lounge um, that we went to several times a day called the starlight lounge, sub sublight lounge. And then there's a guest service area. There's a gift shop. And then there's um, the hallways to go to your rooms. So this is all kind of out of the atrium. So the atrium is like kind of the center hub for yeah. all of these activities. So you walk through the atrium, you go down to your floor. I think rooms were on the fourth floor, the fifth floor, the sixth floor is the floor you're on with the atrium. And then there was the seventh floor. Our room was on the fourth floor, which is great. We were the last three rooms all the way on the right. And the cast member takes you and shows you around your room. I think I did a little video of the room. Yes. The room was larger in person than the pictures that I had seen on like on any like YouTube or video. Mm -hmm. It was a hotel room with a bed and it had the um, two areas. I don't even know what you call them. They're really not bunk beds because they're in the walls, but there's two, two additional mm -hmm. beds are in the wall. Then there's a pull down bed that we never pull down, but similar, I'm guessing to like pop century has that comes out of the wall. Um, and then they have this little, <laughs> That's what, the resemblance. That's where his resemblance ends. Pop century, but <laughs> <laughs> the trundle bed well, is out. <laughs> well, it's a flip down one. We never flipped it down. And then it has these two uh, ottomans and this table. So the table pulls out, and the ottomans you can make into a table or you can store it away. It has a large screen where there's um, activity going out outside. It really makes it look like you're in space. Yeah. It has a droid in the room that every morning will talk to you about what you need to do. In fact, one day I said, what's the weather like on that too? It's the day before he went away. So, yeah. you know, she answers some of your questions. And she's, this is like a video screen kind of droid. Correct. It's yeah, not, yes. not like a droid walking around the, <laughs> your room. Right. So the only like one thing. Was, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's just video. And one thing that Disney has to still fix is, they have this light switch when you first walked in for the main light, and then there's a secondary light switch. So if you want, like I do, to have my reading light on at night, you can't do that without having the main light switch, which also controls other lights. So you can't shut all the lights off in your room and have a reading light on. It's either there's oh. like three lights on that are tied together. Mm -hmm. So I actually called down the first night. I'm like, how do I get this light, uh, the lights off? They're like, you can't. Yeah, we, we know that's a problem. It's on our list. We have to figure out how to fix that. So <laughs> okay. uh, that was kind of an odd thing that uh, uh, I think Disney didn't think about at okay. a time, but well, they're working looking on up, that. So it looks like a spaceship kind of room that you've seen on all, all kinds of Star Wars Correct. and Star Correct. Trek kind of cruiser kind of thing. And what's the Correct. window? What's your view out the window? So the view screen you can turn on or off. And when you look out the window, it shows planets and things kind of going by, like they might be a TIE fighter or there might be some oh. kind of other planets or other stars. And it's moving slowly. Okay. So that you don't really have a view outside. There is a spot in the star cruiser where you could go and get daylight but other than that you were really convinced that you were on a cruise yeah. ship 
and this is your environment. <laughs> yeah, no balcony, huh? <laughs> no balcony, no bright light. And then no the balcony funny in thing, space. <laughs> uh, my, my poor daughter had my two grandsons, and one of them wanted the screen on. Yep. And one of them wanted the screen off. So you know how that's, you know, that's going to go in the first, right. So after the first, they shut it off at night. And my grandson Liam woke up at like 620 in the morning and the screen was off. So he went and put the screen on and that woke everyone up at like 620 in the morning. But. <laughs> it doesn't make any noise, but you got a lot of light coming in. What do they think? Oh, of those, light those, I thought those bunk beds were pretty cool. If you, that's what we want to call them. Our beds in the wall. <laughs> Pretty yeah, cool. as of the last, I was like, I don't really know what the name is, and they are full size. Yeah. Like you can definitely um, go go in there and lay down as an adult and be fine. In fact, my daughter said that they were very comfortable because she would lay down with my three year old grandson when he was going to sleep at night, and she said, "Yeah, they're they're definitely very so comfortable." What do they advertise? Is it six to a room? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, Sounds I guess like... technically you could fit five, but it would be, it's very tight. Like it's really tight for five. My daughter and son-in-law who had four of the rooms said it was very tight having the four. Okay. And, and that's just because the boys need a little bit more room to spread out. And the, and the bathroom's fine. That was just regular, regular right. stuff. But the room yeah. itself was, was very, very nice. And remember now it's only been open two weeks. Everything is brand new. Everything right. is, you know, spanking clean and yeah, sure. new. The beds were comfortable. Well, being new, sometimes there's things, there's bugs too to get out. Correct. Right. Correct. But now, have you been on a Disney cruise before, Wendy? Like I've been a, on a cruise on a before, but not Disney. Okay. Would Was it kind of like, do people compare this to the experience of being on a cruise? Yes, Cause you're very much so. You're locked very in much so. on a ship, although it's in space. Correct. Correct. <laughs> I wish I can find it. Um, John had a. I'll have to find what John had a, a way that he thought it was part cruise, part uh, dinner show. I don't know. There was something else. I'll have to, I'll have to go back and see what he said, but um, it definitely is very much like a cruise and they really want you to think it's a cruise. I mean, they yeah. really do. I mean, you can help yeah. tell the theming in the hotel is definitely hundred percent Disney. I mean, they have every single detail, the hallways, I mean, the food that they had, the cast members, when you interacted with the cast members, if you said like, oh, I was at Disney, you know, last week, what's Disney? What's Disney? Like they, every single cast member we came into contact with, which is a lot, every single person was a hundred percent in character, right? you know, right with you that this is a cruise, we're on this planet and this is what's happening. We're in space. So we're in space. Exactly. So the cast members had literally exceptional service. I think in the price, that is what you're paying for. There are a ton of cast members all over the place and whatever you want, they, they would provide for you. It's like, they would help you. The guest services is like, whatever we had gone to Batu and did not get um, these two lightsabers that my grandsons wanted. And we looked in the gift shop on the ship and they didn't have those. And the ones they had on the ship, they were not like the retractable kind where it would be easier to store. And there were a lot more in the gift shop. The person in the gift shop said, do you want them? We'll send a cast member to get them. They went back to Hollywood Studios and they got the lightsabers my grandsons wanted and they brought, yeah. they delivered them. Because lo- location wise, you can get, you're right next to Hollywood Studios and Batu and the- Correct. Right. The, the Correct. Star Wars land. You can walk right there. Correct. You cannot yeah. walk there. Oh no. Okay. It's not no, that. I mean, it's, it's, okay. I think it's across a parking lot. Oh, okay. So it's very close, but in the end, they don't let you out. You can't leave the hotel. No. Oh, okay. Like if you, if you forget something in your car, like if you drive, a cast member will escort you to get it and get back. You cannot get in and out of the hotel by yourself. Oh, okay. And so, and this is a, we haven't even said it's a two night experience, right? Two night experience. Yes. Yeah. And that's for, no more, no less. That's it's always that way. And like you said, there's Correct. a show and there's an adventure going on here. Correct. Yes. So we, let me just go back. We'll kind of check in. We have our comm units. There's a buffet from one to four, which we kind of go and check out. And the food, by the way, was unbelievable. It was really good. And after all the comments I heard, it's not good. The food there was really great. I mean, okay. they went above and beyond. The food was really good. Was it a little strange? <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Yes. But it was it everything that Disney did with this, it made it all be one big experience. There was only one food that I thought was not good, but everything else was really good or, you know, definitely worth 
trying. And they had all, everything was set up on like little plates, little square plates or little plates. So you can kind of take your tray, which was, you know, I'm sure Disney designed this tray to be a Galaxy's Edge you know, themed tray. And you have these little squares, these little rectangles that you put your little taste of your things into your tray. So when you're trying all these different things at the buffet, you're not trying big portions. You're trying like little bits and pieces. So if you don't like something, um, that's fine. But let me, let me back up a little bit before we get to the food. Um, So the cast members were, like I said, I mean, that's what you're paying for is that service. It was that level of service. I know Disney has an adventure by Disney. That's supposed to be unbelievable as far as service. I would think that this would be on that far. I've never done one, but of course now I want to. <laughs> but they just, the, the cast members, I just can't say enough about them. They tried to learn your name. It is just, they try to anticipate if they saw you were struggling with something or wanted something, they really did go out of your way. I don't know if that's because it's new and they're just, this is their A game. Or if that's what they're going to keep up the whole time that this mm-hmm. Star Cruiser is in existence, but it was amazing. So part of the thing that you had to do is you had to go on missions if you so choose. And really, that's what you're paying for. If you think I'm going to go there, it's going to be a Star Wars hotel. I'm going to hang around and have a drink and maybe go to Hollywood Studios. You're really not getting your money's worth out of the hotel. Mm-hmm. Really going on the missions and the interactions that you have are I think the majority of what you're paying for Mm -hmm. the experience, the adventure, the adventure. So the one thing that was really interesting, we first got there, we would see the stormtroopers walking around and Chewbacca would be walking around and there was this ship director and they're all the, you know, characters over there. And at first you're like, Oh, I want to get my picture. Oh, I want to get my picture. And then after a while, you're like, you just got so used to them. And they would come over like in one part, I'm in this one room and Chew- Chewbacca comes on. is like, you know, pat me on the back and you just talk to them. And it's so weird because there are 375 people on the ship. Yet the characters are really trying to get to know you as much as the cast members are. Mm. So I thought that that was really unbelievable. And I would not have expected that. What were some of the characters besides Chewbacca? Well, I can't tell all of them because there are some surprises, but the ones that we ran into most were Chewbacca, uh, the Stormtroopers. There was Gaia, who she's been all over the place as far as a singer that's on the ship, and her manager was okay. on there. I can't remember his name, but um, they were there. There was um, this uh, Rhodesian, Ro- Rhodesian kind of character with like this blue green right. head. It was hard. Some of them are hard to talk to like chewing that one. And some are like people that you can talk to. Then there was the cruise director that came around. Um, and she came around and was really trying to talk to everyone. And then there was the ship's captain and they were both in character and they were both important to your mission. Plus they were also talking to you. Then there was a droid very similar to an R2D2 type droid that would come around and interact with the guests a mm. lot. My grandkids really liked like them. And then they were just, like you said, in the beginning, you wanted to get all your pictures. And then afterwards, uh, you're like, oh, yeah, there, there they are. John, I'll be sitting in the bars and the stormtroopers will walk in and, you know, they'll come and chat with us while you're sitting there and they'll, they'll go on. But when they chatted with you, they were in character. What about the A-listers, though? Like Luke. The A-listers? Luke and Han Solo. and No Luke and Han Le- Solo. No, no Princess Leia, Darth Vader. Where's all the big guys? So there are other big guys that come at the end, but it did not, this did not take place during movies four, five, and six. This took place between movies seven and eight, I think is what I'm told. Like, so it's the newer movies. So the characters that come later on are not those characters. Okay. All right. She's trying not to be a spoiler. I don't mind. I'm trying not to be a spoiler. I really (laughs) don't because you know what? I know that there's people that are going to listen that are then going to do that. And I don't want to spoil the ending is um, everything you're doing for the two days is leading up to the ending. And I just don't, I don't want to spoil that. All right. Okay. So uh, do you want to do food? Yeah. So you had a good buffet. We got that. What were, what were the other, do you have quick services or other, do they have restaurants? No. Um, No. So we were on level four and level four also had the dining room called the crown of Corellia and the crown of Corellia has a lunch buffet between one and four. Uh, And actually, actually that's where the eating was. It was a breakfast buffet 
on both days. It had a lunch buffet between one and four, and then it had two different dinners. So the first dinner was, in fact, I took um, notes of what what they were. This was one price. The meals were included. The meals were included. The alcohol was not included, but the meals were included. Yeah. The first night was called an evening with Gaia. And she was the entertainment. She sang. She has a beautiful voice and she kind of worked the room. We were sitting, our table was sort of in the back of where Gaia was performing, but she walked around the entire time. I think our cast member said there were 375 people on the ship and they were divided up into two seatings, a 530 seating, which we had and an eight o'clock seating. Mm -hmm. So figure there were, you know, maybe 150 ish kind of people in the, in the dining room. Um, And it was plenty. Yeah. The service was great. We had our, our waiter and he brought everything out in courses. So there was like a first taste, which was a red fruit pillow. Then there was, they called it a bento experience, which had some kinds of dumplings and had tip yip chicken, a bantha beach, which beef, by the way, which was delicious. Mm. First, I wasn't even going to try it. I'm like, oh my goodness, that was great. <laughs> Flora vegetables with potato and curry. That was delicious. Then um, it also had these interplanetary dipping sauces that came with all the dumplings. So that was really great. All right. And then of course we're done. And it's like, then they bring the main course. So there was scallops and shrimp and the chicken. And um, I don't know, there's some kind of vegetable dish. And for those who have like a special dietary needs, if you're a vegan or if you're vegetarian or if you're, I mean, the chef comes out like all the Disney restaurants and makes sure that you can eat. And I said right away that I had the tree nut allergy. They're like, yeah, there's nothing on the ship that has tree nuts. They're just, that was it. There was nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I think they really tried to plan for that. And then the desserts were so yummy. They had, of course, chocolate dessert and they had a caramel dessert. And, you know, it's one of those things where they'll bring you as much as you want. We did actually, I think, had an extra chocolate dessert. And then the boys had their own menu, which was it was, you know, definitely Disney's children type food, but it looked different and they yeah. were fine with that. Yeah. And for dessert, they had cookies and milk. And afterwards, everyone's like, can we get their chocolate chip cookie cookies? <laughs> so they're like going back and get chocolate chip cookies. And yeah. the presentation of the dishes and just everything, we had these dishes that looked like celestial heavens and planets and stuff on them. And every course you got a different dish and different silverware. The glasses you got were these... Um, silver yeti type of glasses so it kept everything cold in there if you got like soda or juice or whatever and then they had the regular water glasses everything again all the food was included except for your drinks and i did get used to drinking that bluish green wine when i was there (laughs) and i got used to it by the end (laughs) so when you're off in space yeah there's not a lot of variety if they have bluish green wine and that's what you have right correct Get, get used to it or (laughs) <laughs> and then the second night for dinner was called a taste around the galaxy. And each of the chefs that were in charge of one of the courses came out and talked about it, talked about where it was from, you know, which is whatever the planet was that it was from and their inspiration and what the tastes were. Then they started working the crowd a little bit. Like the first one got a big applause. The second one was like, hey, you clap more for me. Let's try this again. I made the entree. And everyone's like, oh, oh I'm clapping for that person. And These were the chefs? These are the chefs. They That's came out cool. the second night and they talked about each of their courses. And then the pastry chef came out. And as soon as she came out, everyone started applauding for her because the food was just delicious. And she knows she made a lot of the That's treats awesome. that were in the, in the, for breakfast and for lunch. And um, so that was really nice that they, came and explained the dishes for each of the I love that idea, though. I, you know, I could see that so much could be happening at other the Disney restaurants, for sure. Because right. they're so yes. talented, these chefs. They are. So we that night we had these spreads that came out with, with breads. But the breads didn't look like anything you had seen before. They were, uh, I don't know, what, <laughs> kind of like something you might get at Sanaa, but not the pita. <laughs> and they have all these breads and dips. And then the ice what do they call it? Ice pollution shrimp cocktail came out and they brought this ice, this shrimp on ice with all the ice that smokes. Yeah. So it was the, um, so they came out and there was steam coming everywhere and there was the shrimp and my grandkids got a, such a kick out of that. And we got two platters because there's eight of us and they're watching which one is still steaming and everything and dry ice. Right. And the <laughs> shrimp are green. Like, and so then we're looking at it like, oh, I don't know if we want to try it or were they blue? Maybe they're blue. Sorry. And we looked at it and we tried it. It was delicious. Um, the food there, like I said, was really great. 
And then the entrees were, they called it a white fish, but I don't know if it was similar to like a grouper. It was definitely a sweet white fish. And that had like a little corn seed relish on it and some little, and that was, I had that, that was great. And then there was a braised bantha beef short rib. That was the other thing. And I'm like, well, you know, I really don't eat like a lot of meat. And our waiter said, you want to try this. It's really good. You want to try this. So John and I each took some and had a rich fig fruit demi glaze on it. We tried it. It melted in your mouth. Yeah. Like that was the one food that we said, other than the chocolate chip cookies, can we, can we have more of this? And my son-in-law, I don't know how many pieces of that mm. the beef short rib he ate. It was just really good. Yeah. I've loved their short ribs when I've had, uh, it, like you said, tender and melts in your mouth, right? And then when the pastry chef came out, it was a shin, shindrillion air cake which was chocolate, cream of jorgen fruit, and some kind of fruit jelly. And that was melt in your mouth. It kind of looked like, oh, that's maybe a big piece. I'll maybe have half, and then you ate the whole thing. That's pretty much how it happened. <laughs> so, um, so the food there was amazing. And like, like I said, I wasn't expecting that because in, I was kind of reading what other people were saying, and they like saying that Disney really missed the mark, but I disagree. I don't know if they went in the preview days and they didn't have it down pat yet, but... Mm, we thought the food like was delicious. Too. Yeah. The one thing I thought was not good, which was they had, would have out of breakfast, they had kind of like a dish and it had like a little, basically a little like corn muffin and a little donut and a little pastry. And they were, you know, all the things are different colors and had the, had like little sugar on top. I think when they tried to make the color and put the sugar on top, it, it made it really hard. So like mm. the corn muffin, the part in the top, it just, it didn't mm. taste very good. And it just kind of, I don't know if it's from sitting out, but, that was the one thing I thought was not good was those, those kind of muffiny fruit things. Um, okay. But the breakfast they had probably, I don't know, eight or 10 choices. They had cut up fruit. They had these like eggs on top of a hash brown and something else. And they all had really clever names to them. And I took pictures of everything. So I can send you some of the pictures for, to put in the website if you want to do that. But that was really great. And then the other place you could eat was a sub sublight lounge. They had uh, snack foods that you can get all during the day. And then at breakfast time, they had bananas and like those little mandarin oranges. And they always like had like a coffee station set up in the morning. And then they had a, a boxed breakfast. So the day that you went to Batu when you went to Galaxy's Edge, you can just pick that up and take it with you if mm. you didn't want to take the time to sit down at the buffet breakfast. Okay. Um, and then the lounge was not that large. And I was kind of concerned that it was not that big of a space for the number of people on the ship, but mm -hmm. we actually went there a lot, both in the afternoon and the evening. And we never had to wait for a table. I mean, it was, mm. I don't know how they did it, but it was really great. My daughter went and had this lemon drink that had a cloud on top and she really liked that. And on John's birthday, we went to toast. I had a glass of wine and he had a pod chaser, which was an old fashioned, but instead of using ice, they have a sil silver metal ball that's cold that they put in the drink. Oh. And I asked about it, and he said it was good, but it was a very, very small pour. <laughs> that was, <laughs> was what he was saying. <laughs> so in the bar, when you first walked in, there was a large table, round table, where different people can sit around it, and like a poker table, except it was a sabak table. And literally for the two days we were there, I never saw a free seat at that sabak table. Mm -hmm. People loved it. Sabak is a card game. And there's also a couple times on the ship that you could go and have a sabak tournament and play. And John and I would play that in the bar. If the kids are going to sleep, we would have a drink and we'd play sabak. They just bring the cards to you when you're sitting at the lounge. Um, and we didn't do the tournament, but that was really great. So again, I didn't really realize how many people were on the ship because everyone was going different directions with their missions and they split the people up as far as their seatings for dinner. And there was just so many different places to go and explore. It almost seemed like really there was not that many people on the, on the ship. Hmm. We kept seeing the same few couples over and over again. And I think mostly because the ones we really noticed were the, were the ones whose costumes were a lot better than ours. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and I know Samantha wanted to know how many costumes a day do you need? We each brought one costume for each day. Well, let me just tell you, these people dressed. There were people in costumes, sometimes really elaborate with several changes a day. 
in the evening at dinner, there are people that dressed in like long gowns, updo hair. I mean, really, really went all out. There's some, you can tell the characters. There was this one family from New Jersey. They had six different outfits. And I think they're, they're, I don't know what they do for a living, but their costumes were definitely mm. like, you know, real Broadway type of costumes. I mean, they were just amazing. Wow. A lot of people, um, painted their face color, you know, whether it would be blue or green. And they just had all different assortments of, of mm. outfits and people changed. Like I said, <laughs> talk about people watching. <laughs> That's a great, it's almost like a, you know, it's one of the fun things for Halloween. You go and see how the guests dress. So that, that's right. a great, great thing for, for you to see right. here on the ship. If you do go, yeah, I would definitely dress. I mean, it definitely adds to yeah. the whole experience, I think. You got to be prepared with all of the, as much as you can do. And I, so tell me about the right. adventures. What can you tell me? How much can you tell me about your adventures? Yeah. And did you, did you get any sleep on this <laughs> cruise at all? <laughs> we did, but I, I'm telling you the people that did a lot more than we did. So there, we had three rooms. So my son, so Jeffrey and Andrew probably did the most of all the missions because they broke off in the group and it really is easier to do it in two and four. If this is a hard thing to do with a group of eight people. Sure. Again, a tip I would say, maybe go with two or four people. I wouldn't really go with more than that if you want to stay all together. What happens on your comm link is, well, first of all, you try to go and explore and you have a magic band and there are places on the ship that you can go and just scan your magic band and try to get into them. Mm -hmm. And it will either tell you access is stained or access is denied based on what's on your magic band. So sometimes we were trying to break in where we shouldn't have been and then we would get a message I see you're trying to access the restricted area and then they'll ask you questions. And based on how you answer your questions, you kind of get funneled through different missions. They ask you if you want to be on the side of the resistance or you're on the first order. And there's always like four answers to the question. Mm. So the way that you answer it kind of funnels people off almost like a flow chart in a way. So if you figure out every time you answer this question, you go do this. If you answered it this way, you would go do this. And it, and it just kind of does that for the whole mission. Mm -hmm. So you have everyone on the ship that are answering these questions in a different way. Okay. And then, so if I was answering A, and then the next one, I answered the B part, the next one, C, I got to be a different way than if I answered C and then A and then B. It just, it makes you go in different directions. I don't know, really know how to say it without saying it more clearly without saying giving too much most of our geeking family that knows you wendy knows yes. your reputation so my biggest question yeah. then would be did you end up in the brig <laughs> well i wasn't i wasn't locked in the brig but i was at the brig <laughs> <laughs> no wait a minute you said you're gonna start behaving yourself yes well i wasn't i was there to i was there to help <laughs> you, um, you knew the area huh you, you've been I knew there the area, yes yes so you have so the more that you answer then there's more people that come up on your comlink so the more you the more things you do the more access you have and the more things you're able to do hmm. so if you go on this trip and you say i want to sit back in the lounge and people watch big waste of money you need to really be part of these missions and then you really in start getting involved in it and your mission start really right away. I was so impressed that we got there, checked in, got changed. We were only on the ship for an hour or two, and we were already starting to go through missions and already getting communications and already starting. So by the end of the first day, we had a lot of stuff that we have done already and a lot of stuff that we were asked to do the next morning on BAP2. So I think we went to sleep the first night at around 10 o'clock. We heard a couple that was up till like, and the lounge stays open till 2 a.m. So we had a couple that was stayed up to well past midnight and they had to get up. Your link starts around 6 a.m. Very much like G3. Your <laughs> link with your messages start really early. And there, I remember a couple the next day saying, yeah, you know, we stay, you know, we don't, we're not really getting any sleep, but we have to be here. You just kind of get invested in these missions if you agree to do them. Sounds like the G3 when the games that you do with Correct. <laughs> the challenges that the, the grand geek and glory. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I guess, the more, right. Maybe you got some ideas from this experience for, <laughs> for us. So that's kind of the first day you're in there, you're checked in, you had, we had our dinner, you get your missions, you start doing things the very first night. 
there was a message, for example, when we got our bill, there was a message underneath the receipt that we had to find other people in the restaurant that had other parts of our message to mm. find out about. So, so, I mean, there's all, they find all different ways to get these missions and you get different information. Okay. And my son was on different messages, missions than we were. And then when we got together, we're like, Oh, you're doing that. You're meeting this person here. I'm meeting this person here. And sometimes you're meeting with one of the star players and there's like, you know, just a couple of you meeting them in an off location and here are all these people on the ship. So I don't know how Disney does this to mm -hmm. get everyone to get such individual attention with these characters, but they did. Wow. So that started the first day. And the second day you wake up, like I said, early, we had our breakfast. We, uh, oh, also on the first day we had lightsaber training. So you're broken up into small groups. I think there's maybe about a 12 to 16 people in a room. The person who the cast member who's in charge of lightsaber training so well themed i mean she was just so great about not necessarily doing the correct moves but it being a part of you and thinking about inside and using the force and you kept getting messages from her afterwards about using that knowledge when you're on your missions and um, they had a separate one for the kids so seven and under had their own so then the second day liam and logan had their lightsaber training with their own cast members mm. and then what else then we had uh, we went to batu we had our transfer and the transfer to hollywood studios was definitely in theme um you go in and it looks like i mean i've seen in the spoilers that it's like a big box truck that drives you but when you walk in there it almost looks like a train it will sit 12 people three six nine twelve will sit 12 people and it's these luxurious cars with like cushion seats and there's a cast member that comes with you and before you cross into batu you get to wear this pin and that pin is trust me is like gold having that pin on there mm -hmm. that that tells the staff uh, that tells the cast members at galaxy's edge that you are on the star cruiser mm -hmm. you get such attention from those cast members like i can't even tell you so we Better go over birthday to pin? Better than the birthday pin. <laughs> so we go over, we do our ride. We go on to the Millennial Falcon and we're doing our ride. And do you know, before you go on the Millennial Falcon that you have Hondo talks to you about what mission you're going to do and how he wants the coaxium and all that. Yeah. Well, he goes, Oh, there you are. The fancy people from the star cruiser hotel. Wow. So he actually said that there was something in probably our communes that alerted him that we were there and it came out in the dialogue before we got on to um, wow. pilot the Millennial Falcon. Cool. So that I thought was super cool. Right. And then when we went to do rise of the resistance, the ride broke down. So <laughs> after one part we go, it was right before you got to the stormtroopers. So we're going, there's like, okay, we'll just go wait over here. And this cast member saw that we had the pins and he goes, Oh no, not you. You're on the storm cruiser. You come with me. Okay. They took us off. They gave us a, a, an experience on our band again, because we went right to the lightning lane. He said, come back at any time. And I said, okay, well, we'll try to, you know, make that work. We only had a small amount of time to get all of our missions done. So we had so had, you, you um, had missions at Batu in the park. Yes. Yes. So and we were... could have done so many more than we did. Okay. Well, how are they, how are they now? This is using this little iPhone gadget to do these missions. Yes. I gotcha. Yes. There was a ton of stuff to scan that you had to go and find. And, um, there was a lot of stuff in the marketplace that you had to hack into the system and you had to scan it and it gave you some coordinates of things that you needed a lot later on. So, all those unassuming things in the marketplace were really important with the star cruiser. So they must've had that all planned, obviously sure. wow. when they built galaxy says initially. So then we said, okay, we're going to try to go to Ogus early. Well, you know, trying to move a reservation for eight at Ogus is no mean feat. We get up to the, I go up to the podium. I said, look, at riser resistance broke down. We have to change things around. We're on the star cruiser and we need a sit down table for eight. We had that in, in like three minutes. Wow. Okay. So, it's like as soon as they see you with your pin on, they just did anything they could to help you. I mean, that was unbelievable. There was also a little section near the transport that they always had like bottled water and cold towels. We didn't go to do that, but you could do that if you wanted to. But um, a lot of the cast members would talk to us about our experience because they saw the pin was on it. So that was interesting. And my daughter's like, can we keep this pin? I think we can put it on next time. We're at Hollywood Studios. Yeah, I mean, right. like I said, like when the ride broke down. 
Yeah, we didn't, they just, they just took us right off. And after Oga's and we were trying to go back, the ride had broken down. So then the lightning lane, I mean, they had like one of those big long sides with like an end of the lightning lane thing. And we just went to the front and we told the cast member, look it, we can't wait in this lightning lane line. We already had half the ride. Can we just go in and do the other half of the ride? Because we have to be back. She goes, of course. She whisked us right in, right to the part where we left off. And she just goes, they have to go on here right now. And we didn't even wait in the lightning lane or restart the ride. We just went from where we left off. I mean, they were so accommodating. How long were you in Galaxy's Edge? Well, we had to go back. We had a capture the moment photo uh, shot session, whatever you call it, set for two o'clock. It was initially at 10 o'clock and we changed it to two o'clock. Really? That was one of the things you should have done on the first day. I kept trying to get it on the first day and we just couldn't. I think Margita could have gotten us it for us at eight o'clock at night, but that would have been late for the boys. I don't think they would have been in any, any state to mm. listen to anyone at eight o'clock at night. That's usually way past their bedtime. So we rushed back for that. And then there were some kids activities that for some reason, they just, the boys didn't end up getting to, but we rushed back to, I guess, probably two o'clock. We could have done a ton more missions because every time you complete a mission, you get a new mission. Mm. So we finished what we knew we had to do on Batu before we came back. And we probably came back about quarter to two, changed into our stuff, had the photo session from two to two thirty, and then finished whatever other missions we could then. And by that time, there's people all over the ship. There's other rooms. There's an engineering room. There's the brig, like you said, there's, there's back on the bridge. Oh, and then we had bridge training later that day, which you actually learned how to fly the ship, which was super cool. Mm. There's just so much to do. I mean, it's like 10 o'clock at night. You're like, I'm still not done doing everything yet. So it's really inclusive. If you are someone who really wants to do all the missions, you would really like it. Is it worth the money? Yes. If you like that, you want a high level of service. If you like all the inclusiveness of it, if you want the interactive parts with it, yes. Hmm. What was the photo shoot? The photo shoot's like the thing they're doing all around the parks now, right? But correct. You did it correct. on the ship. Correct. All right. And they go different yeah. places and what, what? Yes. Well, how long yes. was that for? Thirty minutes. So normally they're twenty minutes, but this was thirty minutes. All dressed up in your costumes. Yes, I actually chose. I did two costumes for that. So, um, yes. So again, the cause, if you like all that, someone, I think one of the questions was, is do you have to be a super star Wars fan? You don't have to be a super star Wars fan, but I think you do really want to do the interactive parts. And the things that really surprised me is my son is very, is more on the quiet side. You always talk about introvert. Mm -hmm. I mean, he and Andrew, that would be them, but they got so into the missions that they were, they were all about it. And it was really great someone had asked would I do it again and I said I wouldn't do it again unless something changed maybe the storyline changed maybe with a different group of people two nights is absolutely the right amount for that I don't know if I could have been awake enough for a third night <laughs> and my last thing is I really don't think it's for kids under 10 that was really hard having the boys on there because my daughter and son-in-law didn't get to do as many as the missions because they had the kids with them. Yeah. So that was a one definite takeaway. I would tell your audience if you had like, like Glenn and Jeff with like a father son thing, or, you know, if you want to have like a bonding experience with one of your children, that would be an amazing way to do this. But it was really hard. Like Stephanie ended up, getting the boys to bed and then she would stay with the boys and then Kevin would go back out and do some of the missions in the evening. So she kind of missed out on those type of things, but you know, I mean, they still had fun. They still liked it. You know, the next morning when we woke up on our third, third morning there, our um, Logan didn't want to leave and Liam said he wanted to be there for a hundred more days. So <laughs> even though they weren't doing the interactive stuff, they still liked enough of it. There were quite a, a lot of kids on there. I just don't think, it's worth it to pay for the kids gotcha. under 10. Very good. All so, great advice. Well, yeah, let's get in. Speaking of Glenn and questions? Jeff, I got, yeah. I'm going to, let's go through their questions now. Glenn didn't want to know too much because he's right. not going to listen to this. He's going in two weeks as we're recording. Yes. And, but he did say he wanted to know about the three hour buffet and arrival day, which we talked about. Yes. The, you know, he says, or are there any benefits of coming in with a backstory? Um, I don't, 
think so. I mean, you kind of get immersed in the story that they have. I mean, I guess the more, the more that you know, the more it will make sense to you, but I didn't have all that. And I, I definitely got it. It come, everything comes together. You get bits and pieces of it all through these missions and all through, and then at the end, there's a big grand finale show and everything comes together then. Yeah. And he was saying, he knows that you got to tap your band on everything, which we were everything. <laughs> well, yes. We know how to do that. And, and I know yes. you gave, he didn't want any spoilers, but the one spoiler you got to give is about just getting there from wherever you're coming from. Right. <laughs> I did. I told him that I said, it'd be better. If I responded to him saying, uh, my opinion is if you had your own car, you could park. And if it was really awful, you can like leave and come back. You know, if the line was really bad or just like I said, getting there, but the mirrors was really difficult. And like I said, uh, Disney will pay for that. They will give you, but it's like definitely worth taking an Uber or Lyft or something else to get there. All right. I think you answer these questions, but we'll just want everyone to know I, I'm acknowledging them. Heather Marie Tyson she said from other sites, she said that they're having trouble filling some dates. And is this a one and done for you? Well, you know, it would really be fun to do like a girl's trip with like four people or if like John and I went with another couple. Okay. I, mean, I can right. see doing that again, but I wouldn't want to do it with the same storyline. Okay. And I'm guessing Disney's going to have to change up the story because I know what happens at the end. So... I'm not, I probably wouldn't do it again unless they change the story. Okay. Let's see. Jeff Kessler. He says, I'm assuming it's already in the plan, but I'd been interested to hear your top three favorite foods. And as I hope to try everything, but feel that it's not feasible. <laughs> it is feasible. It definitely is feasible because you get such small little plates. Oh, okay. um, you can really try. I mean, I tried everything that I wanted to try honestly. And, and the things at the breakfast buffet, they, it's very similar, both of the days and the things at the lunch buffet are very similar. Both of the days they had one or two new things each time, but if you didn't try it one day, you can get the other day. And then at dinner, you definitely can try everything. What, you can. What was your top three favorites? Hmm. Um, I don't know. That's really, that's tough. That chocolate cake in the last night was really good. Uh -huh. I definitely have to, put that up there um that short rib bantha short that was really good the second night i would say that's probably my second favorite uh i don't know maybe the breakfast pizza they have this little breakfast pizza i think they make their own dough there and they have like this little pizza oh. i think that was really good too those would awesome. be my top three selena roll a good friend of ours someone who you've put together these kind of adventures yeah. for our grand yeah. gathering scavenger hunts did the experience cater well to both the adults as well as the grandkids no i definitely think it's more i mean if you had older grandkids yes i mean like i said i'd say eight or eight maybe would be the minimum nine ten they have to really be able to read their commune and really be able to understand what some of the missions are and right. then absolutely i think our kids at three and six they were too young not that we didn't want to have them there but you know, when we decided to go to the Star Wars Hotel, we booked it. We had no idea what it was, really. Right. I mean, we booked it in October. It just said sample itineraries. We we didn't know. Sure. And I'm so glad that we went. It was a great 60th birthday for my husband. It was a great family trip. I think the one who really suffered the most was my daughter, Stephanie. She really didn't get to do as much as everyone else got to do. So... If your grandkids are older, you know, yeah. yes. And it would be, I think it would be a cool generational trip if you knew that you're only going to get together at dinners and you're going to kind of go off during the day and night to do your other things. Okay. And then Selena wants to know, what do the kids enjoy the most? I don't know if they had a one thing that they said that they enjoyed the most out on the Star Cruiser. The lightsaber experience, was it similar to the one in the parks? No. The lightsaber that they did was lightsaber training. That was totally different. And they did like that. They had a little part where they were able to race droids, but that was kind of, they missed the droid racing on the second day. And then on the third day, when we were waiting to check out, one of the cast members just came over with the droids and they were playing with them for like half an hour. Um, I think probably the bridge training would maybe be their, their best because we did keep going back to the bridge. It's this big, giant open room. It looks very similar to Space 220 where you see the outside, but there's all these little stations where you can 
press buttons. Uh And when you're at your bridge training, you get to do these missions. There's four different types of um, things you can do on the bridge to help fly the ship. And you get to try each one of those. Even the kids got a chance to, like I said, try to push some of the buttons and defeat some of the TIE fighters that were up there. And so I'd probably guess that that's probably the favorite thing because we did keep going back to the bridge whenever there wasn't anyone in there and playing in there. What was John's favorite part? Now, this was a big trip for him. So did you get any of his take on what his favorite part was? I think he said his dinner the night that we were all together for dinner on his birthday (laughs) because, you know, we were all there. You know, it was just, it was really lovely. You know, our kids aren't living home anymore. Right. I mean, one's close to us, two are close to us now. One won't be soon. My daughter is moving away. So it was kind of like a big family vacation that we're all together. And he said, having my kids and my grandkids with me on my yeah. birthday yeah. was definitely his, his highlight I, for sure. I get that. I would, I would probably agree with the same thing. All right. Catherine Fruit. Did you partake in any libations and bites at the Sublight Lounge or, or any we didn't talk about or any of your favorites and must tries? Um, we actually didn't eat the food because, you know, if you eat <laughs> breakfast and lunch and dinner, <laughs> I mean, we just really didn't other than, you know, in the morning we would grab some of the fruit that was there, but we did, I did have wine there. We went, we would go there like in the afternoon or the evening to play cards or just to rest for a little bit when the boys were resting. Um, the only drink that John had other than beer was that the old fashioned called the pod chaser. And then Stephanie had that lemon drink. Other than that, we had wine, but um, they had a huge drink in Regular wine like you're used to? No, nope. same wine from Opus. <laughs> like the greenish color, <laughs> bluish right. greenish kind of color. But I mean, it was fine. Okay. But it, the lounge was really, um, like I said, we kept going there. I still don't understand how it was never crowded when we went there. But um, it was really fun. And the back table in the middle of the lounge was definitely the highlight for a lot of people. I mean, there's some people that they were just, that's all they were doing is they were playing sabak. Oh, wow. And you had a schedule on your communication device and it would tell you like you know one to two sabac tournament in the Corellian dining room or wherever it had different things that you can choose to do so and those were running simultaneously so whereas you can go to the lounge for you know whatever in between all the stuff or stuff was going on that you didn't want to do all right she also asked how often are the transportation shuttles to and from batu scheduled I don't know what time they started because I knew that the kids had the lightsaber training from nine to nine 30. So I don't know what the earliest was, but the last one was back at four. You had to be back on the ship by four o'clock. Okay. And so they're going all during the day, back and forth. All during the day. Yes. Yeah. You didn't have to go at a certain time. Okay. So you could choose. We actually were scheduled for a nine fifty one, but I don't think you really needed to be scheduled because we just knew we were going to go right after we were done with lightsaber training. We just kind of walked over there and we were the only ones that were on our transport when we went over. I mean, it only takes five minutes. I think they just go across the parking lot. So, and they just keep coming and going all day. Now, one of our favorite friends, Samantha Kuhn, <laughs> how many outfits is too many outfits for a two night <laughs> trip? The, now this coming from the, the, the I woman understand. who had 11 suitcases at the old Key West resort. <laughs> so there were a lot of people in costume and there were a, quite a few that had changed several times a day. I think the most I had seen was six costumes for one family. And I mm-hmm. think uh, Samantha and Rebecca are going to hope to be that family. <laughs> I, I want to say, <laughs> I wanna say about 70 people, 70% of the people dressed up. Okay. at least one or mm. one or two of the days john thought it was closer to 50 but um i don't know i think it was more than that and i know like we all had two outfits mm. we each had two outfits when we went i definitely think that kind of gets you more in the mode to do the to do the missions just my opinion Christina Marriott asks, did the super fans take over and make it hard for the average fan or was there enough for everyone to feel involved in the storyline? Absolutely enough for everyone to feel involved in the storyline. If you got involved, I mean, you had to, you had to tap your magic band. You had to accept the missions. You had to answer the communications that you got. So if you did those things, I think anyone could be, Uh, feel like they're part of the missions. I don't think you had to be a super fan. I think because so much of what we at our age, Kurt, think of as Star Wars is Luke Skywalker and, you know, Han Solo and all that. 
but it really isn't. It's this new generation of Star Wars. And I just mm-hmm. think there's not a lot of people that know as much about that backstory. And if whether you're a super fan or a regular fan or even not that much of a fan, I think if you're willing to do the interactive part, right. I don't even think you need to be a super Star Wars person. Yeah, just go along with it. I know that that's the yes. thing I'm getting away from this, Wendy, for sure. Yes. I'm glad. Yes. I think I'm sure Christina preaches. I appreciates that too. Judy, Auntie Judy asks, how much did you participate in the story? Really as much as we could. We did take breaks during the day and we tried to take my grandkids for my daughter and son-in-law. So they had a little time too. So if we went just as adults, we probably would have gotten to do more missions, but we really did as much as we really could Mm. Um, from early in the morning to at night. We really kept um, participating. And then it was helpful that, Jeff and Andrew had different missions. So we kind of knew a little bit about from them. And then some of the fans, some of the other guests that were on board helped you too. And the interesting thing is my son talked to three different people and one person in particular who was a guest basically told Jeff that he was actually a cast member, that he was portraying a guest, that there were these Jeff's like he thought there were three of them that he saw that were mingling with the guests and pretending to be a guest to help lead the guests towards the right answers on some of the missions, because some you kind of had to discover on your own. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't discover it, you couldn't go to the next thing. So they were kind of positioned in a place to make sure that the guests that were over there discovered how to access the information. Sure. So he thought that there were three of them. Yeah. He thought that there were three of them. He said he knew one of them, Basically, because he kept running into the same person. He basically admitted, yeah, um, um, yeah. He goes, I'm not really a guest. I think think you answered her other question. I think you really did get into it. I think you got into it pretty good. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. What was your most favorite part? Hmm. I think normally, you know how much of a planner I am. Yes. And it was very difficult for me to go on this part of the trip where I didn't have a sense of what we were doing and how it was going to all fit together. (laughs) Like that was really hard for me. And I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it as much, but I actually did. I mean, once we got through the awful check-in part, we started painting and I was able to relax. You're so organized and it was uncomfortable (laughs) being disorganized, huh? Correct. Correct. But once I was able to really, you know, jump in with both feet, I think, the whole immersiveness of it and knowing that the level of service was much higher than I expected and really learning the difference between it is not just a star Wars themed hotel. It is just not that at all. Mm. So right. that's, I guess the one thing I'd want people to take away from this for sure. She asks any things Disney could do better or change. Well, we know the check-in piece. Let's just, <laughs> we already talked about that. Oh, that's a logistical nightmare. Right. Um, that and um i would like to be able to read at night (laughs) without having all the lights on it they can kind of get i mean i'm sure that's something that they're just going to have to fix but that for sure very good margita wants to know were you (laughs) this this tells you a little bit about margita were you able to store your luggage someplace on checkout day no i was not (laughs) So that was actually another, I'm just looking to see if I have anything else to tell you. That was actually another really, that was awful. We had our flight that left at 2.30. We didn't know what to do because we had to be out by 10 o'clock. So we were assigned an 8.20 departure time and we just were not going to leave at 8.20. We just didn't in the morning because you have to be out by 10. Oh wow! And you can't have them hold your luggage because you can't go back there. Disney said, well, you can, you know, we had a private car arranged for the airport, but it wasn't until later we thought we were going to go someplace else and then come back and get our luggage. We just stayed as long as we could. We had a car come at 10 o'clock. And we went to the airport really early. We got to the airport like before 11 and our flight was until 2.20. You don't have to go to another resort to drop your luggage off. Well, that's what they had suggested. And we talked about possibly going to um, Animal Kingdom because we hadn't been to Animal Kingdom Lodge. And we talked about possibly bringing our luggage because they were checking it and staying there for like an hour or so. We could have left early, maybe done that for two hours. But it was a lot of logistical getting around. And we just thought we're just going to go there. The consensus was just go to the airport earlier. Okay. That was really hard, too, because they will not store your, store your luggage. 
And again, that was a piece I was really trying to figure out. And for me, we just happened to be leaving that day. If I were to book it, I like that we did the Disney part in the first part and then went to the Star Cruiser at the end. But I might try to do it differently. Like maybe come in, stay at the hotel at the airport something the night before. But then again, you have that luggage thing in the morning. I don't know. Unless you were staying, like Glenn and um, Jeff, I think, are staying one night before and one night after. That would definitely help the Star Cruiser experience because they'll have a place to go afterwards. But it was very difficult going right to the airport and having an afternoon flight. It's another question that tells you a lot about Margita. <laughs> she, <laughs> says, I know you, she says, I know you had a lot scheduled on your Batu day. Did you yes. find you had enough time to eat? <laughs> and and you, I guess you had lunch vouchers for Ogas? And, Correct. Okay. You did. Other places? So, um, did you have lunch vou- vouchers? Is that how it worked? We had lunch vouchers. Actually, it came up when you went to pay for it on uh, mobile ordering. It came up as a uh, dining credit. Okay. So, And here's the interesting part. That included a drink. So we ate at Docking Bay 7 for lunch. And Steph and Kevin both got whatever the alcoholic drinks. They each got one. Oh. And then they're like, you know what? It comes with it. We're going to get that. Yeah. And then after that, so we walked to go on the, on the transport. And they said, you're not allowed to take open container drinks on there. Like they didn't know they were alcoholic. They just can't take drinks out of the top. So Stephanie went in the back and got these two pieces of cardboard, cut them and laid them on top. They didn't even fit. She goes, okay, they're not covered. They said, okay. Oh <laughs> they, let us on the, they let us on because it was just us. I mean, it was crazy that, so they ended up bringing back their drinks um, from docking Bay seven with okay. them. So you did have enough time to eat. You were only there for what time did you get over there? You said you left at two. Yeah, when we were back, you're probably back a quarter to two. Uh, we probably got there around by 10 o'clock. Yeah. So we were there a short time. Four hours. I did have droid builds scheduled for um, uh, Jeff. No, Jeff and Andrew did theirs that day. And we had droid builds for the boys. And I moved that to the day before okay. because that way, that was one thing we didn't have to do during that same time period. And that was kind of helpful. And John, I was looking for something at, John said he described the whole experience as a combination of a cruise, a murder mystery dinner, and a Broadway play. That was what I was trying to trying to find to tell you before. He said, yeah. especially the cast members in the grand finale. Great, great quote. All right, Amy Rhodes, what did you have to per? What did you buy on the cruiser? Did you? How was the gift shop? Did you do any? So buys? the interesting. No, the mm-hmm. they. The gift shop did have a lot of costumes. They did have a lot of things that if you didn't buy anything ahead of time, there were definitely people that first night, because it was open right when you walk in, that were buying stuff immediately. And um, you could use your annual pass and your DVC discount just to let you know you could do that. There were a lot of costumes. I think the things that uh, Glenn ordered for he and his son, those were in there. Those kind of like shirt, kind of Star trek kind of shirts were in there. They had capes. They had dresses. They were definitely pricier for sure. But they had all that. They also had their own version of things. Like they had a their own version of Sabak game that was thirty dollars. Well, it was eighteen dollars if you just bought it at the Tatooine Trader, you know, on in Hollywood Studios. Mm-hmm. So they had their own like branded stuff in the gift shop that was a lot more expensive than if you just bought it at Hollywood Studios. They had a lightsaber that was fifty dollars, and it was thirty dollars in Hollywood Studios. But the thing about the lightsaber that my daughter didn't like is it was in two pieces. And it snapped together, but you keep, couldn't collapse like the the light the saber part of the lightsaber. So mm. that's why they ended up not getting it there. The gift shop was a good size, and again, I think I told you that there's something we didn't want, and they went over to Hollywood Studios and, and got it for us. But we didn't end up purchasing anything at the actual gift shop there. Sorry to disappoint Amy. <laughs> I think you answered this already, but I don't know if you want to. And say anything about but Ashley Myers had two great questions. What was your biggest dis- disappointment and what was your favorite thing? Hmm. Honestly, my favorite thing, obviously that we were all together for sure, but my favorite thing were, was the food, the meals that were there. I had heard before <laughs> I left. <true> geek. <laughs> well, I heard that before I left that the food was not good. And I was like, Oh, and I was concerned about it. What are the boys going to eat? Were they going to cater to them? So I think my favorite part, Okay. Was a, the surprise of the food and the high level of service that the cast members gave you. Those, I guess, those two things really were exceptional. And the disappointment was getting the check in and the check out. Just the logistics of those things 
I thought Disney could have really done better. I really think the check-in part exactly should really be divided up. So rather than 375 people coming at one o'clock, yeah. you should say, okay, your check-in window is, you know, one to 120 or, you know, 120 to 140 or you have kind of like a time set. And if you have to change it, change it, but at least try something to disperse the people. That was just, it, it really, um, it kind of set a bad tone for our trip in the beginning. And Christy Houston, how did each generation like the voyage? Hmm. I think the people who got the most out of the voyage itself are probably Jeff and Andrew who were able to do really the most of the, the missions. And they also said that the characters were so good at improv and sticking to the storyline. Like when I was asking them their favorite part, that's what it was. Okay. And they said the more you interact, the more you get out of it. And they probably got the most out of the mission part of it. I think John and I just liked that we had everyone together. You know, I mean, it's, you know, the, having the kids and the grandkids, there's just nothing better. Right. And I think that was our favorite part, even though it wasn't necessarily had to have happened at the Star Cruiser. It's unique, though. I mean, to say you it did is, this as a family is pretty unique experience so that you can't get anywhere right. else. Right. <laughs> I, I get that. Right. And I think the boys love just exploring. I mean, there was no place that was off limits to them. Mm. They could just go absolutely everywhere. There was not like a room to go to, to play, which I thought was something that they're really missing. You know, like the DVC resorts, they have like a community room where if you need like a little break, you can go there with the kids. I definitely think if they really want to still attract families, they need something like that. Even where it would have like videos playing or some games, you know, okay. younger yeah. kid stuff to do because there really was nothing for them. That's good. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. They were allowed everywhere. And like I said, I think they really loved the bridge. Daniel Ginger says, how was the lightsaber dueling? The lightsaber training was really good. I think it wasn't just the fact that you were taught how to use a lightsaber. That was, you know, okay. But the woman who was in charge of that, who was really, you know, like her mission and her focus and being grounded and being one with the yeah. force. Like she was, did it in such a convincing way. It didn't, it didn't yeah. seem odd. It just that seemed like part of her nature. Yeah. Like sounds, it reminds me of Kung Fu, like not just the, the art of the battle, but also the mind part of. of right. She really yeah. stressed the mind part. I was thinking more yoga, but yes, I mean, more, you know, it's the whole person, the whole being like, she really stressed that. And then later on, as you were going through your missions, you would get, you know, like I said, you get messages from her just to remember to use that and to use, yeah. you know, to believe in yourself and to use that. Ah, yes. The art of war, the mind yes. part. And then I'm going to finish with Jen Batchelder just said, finally, was it worth the price of admission? Yes. I think for the right people who get a lot out of it, it was definitely worth the price of admission. If you're okay with paying for the level of service, if you really want the atmosphere, if you want the interactive parts of it, if you want all of that, yes. If you're going to go because you want a theme for Star Wars and you want to hang out, if you're not going to do the other part, I don't think it's worth it, no. And the other thing to keep in mind is the cost is seasonal. So I know our mission were, our rooms were a little bit more expensive because it was spring break. So just like Disney has value times and okay you know you can also time it to try to get a more economical time to go than we went great advice and well your family tradition is always to ask i don't know if you had a chance wendy to ask everyone what their favorite moment was on this whole trip did you get a chance <laughs> yes we did and it was so funny because we always say what's your favorite moment then everyone starts to hedge their bets and say two things and the first thing Andrew said was, well, we have to have a favorite moment at <laughs> on the first Disney part and a favorite moment uh, at the okay. second part. I know John picked the bonus day in Magic Kingdom in his favorite part. Mm -hmm. I think I picked the storybook dining part as my Magic Kingdom part. I think Stephanie and Kevin both picked the Galaxy's Edge as their part because they had never been there before. Sure. And Kevin's comment, which is actually a lot bigger than what they expected. I mm -hmm. can't remember what Jeff and Andrew said was their Magic Kingdom favorite. But um, on the ship, Jeff and Andrew definitely liked the missions. Like, they were all yeah. about that. Right. Got into and it. Stephanie, yeah, definitely got into it. And John and I, of course, liked having all of our family around. And I think John was saying his birthday dinner was his favorite 
Steph and Kevin liked all the food and all the theming part for theirs. Fantastic. I think we slayed this trip report, Wendy. What do you think? Did, awesome. do, did we miss anything from your notes? I don't think so. I think I really tried to get really my suggestions out as far as if anyone else is on the fence about booking or not booking. And, you know, if anyone wants to talk to me, I try to not spoil some things and just to give advice. But if anyone really wants to know more detail, uh, they can get in touch with me because I don't, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away, but if you're really dying to know, I would happy to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Again, thanks for booking with Margita. I know she, you guys work together <laughs> quite well and you had, we did. I don't want to say you had fun booking this trip. It was, there was not an easy one, but you've got, it's got some great experience that you can share with our, our listeners. And I know you guys are open to do that. Margita, of course, and Wendy's always open and I'm excited. I'm going to see you and John this coming weekend, next weekend. I know it. We're going to New York city. We are going to New York city. Can't believe that we're turning around and traveling again, but, <laughs> but we are. So well, I can't, I can't promise you it's going to be as fun as the Star Cruiser, but I think we'll have fun going to see Aladdin and a Almond Brothers band. Yes. Over, over at the Beacon Theater, which is something I've always wanted to do. Of course, it's not the real Almond Brothers, but it's. I think we'll still have yes. fun. Yes. Being in New York City next weekend together. Okay, and I think I told you if Margie and Judy want to call me for more details, um, uh, like yes. them. I'm happy to do that for them. Absolutely. Well. We'll take you up on that for sure, Wendy. Thanks so quickly to you know get right yeah. back from the trip and then get on the podcast and share it with our listeners. So thank you so much. Absolutely. All right. Goodbye, Kurt. Talk to you soon. Bye, geeks. <laughs> Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Hey, Samantha, were you taking notes? I want one of those communication devices, too, when I'm down at Disney World, so they can tell me my schedule and all my must-dos. <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing Samantha, who I'm going to see this weekend with Wendy. We're going down to New York City. Of course, when this comes out, we already, hopefully, everything goes well, we'll be back home. <sighs> Great job, Wendy. That is a fantastic, informative, just such a cool thing that you could do down at Disney World. If you want to book that with Mom and Judy, contact them at travelandtierras at gmail.com. I know Samantha's actually going to do that also. Well, they did a great intro for us, and I'd love for you guys also do intros. You can create them for us. It's fun. If I can give you a suggestion, just tell us your name, where you're from, a fun Disney World fact or two about yourself, and then you go geeking on Walt Disney World with Curtis and the whole Geeking family. Email them to me at kurt.stone at geekingonwdw.com. Thank you so much, guys. I've got a bunch of intros lately, especially because of all the G3 intros. And I actually recently released an episode in my inner circle. That is a podcast. It's a bonus podcast. You can get if you join patreon.com. Now, patreon.com is a website you can go to and pledge a monthly donation to our show. It's cheaper than going to like Starbucks down at Main Street USA at Walt Disney World and also getting like a Mickey cinnamon bun. They're so fantastic. That will cost you about probably over close to $10. For $5 a month, you could support the podcast. And I'll thank you so much. And you'll also get some bonus podcasts. I got, especially right now, the G3 recordings I did while I was down there in February with all the Geek and family, there's a really cool one out right now. It's got a bunch of bloopers from some intros that were sent to us from Wendy and the whole gang. And Glenn Kessler did a bunch and they messed up a little bit sometimes. You get all those in that episode I just released this week. And a, a coffee walk. That's when I go out with my recorder. I call him Harry the Fourth. And I walk along the property that I'm staying at this time at the Riviera on a Saturday morning after the very fun Friday G3 experience that I had the night before, talking about what I did, what I got coming up for on Saturday. I run into Andy Hoffman. Well, he was in my room, so <laughs> he was just getting up from a late night the night before. And Glenn was in the shower i think at the time and but i did get glenn kessler and his brother 
and Selena and Jackie, brothers and sisters, going on the Skyliner on our way for our Saturday morning. We were on our way to Trattoria Al Forno for our breakfast. I was able to capture some of their thoughts as we we're traveling down the Skyliner. So I had a couple of those recordings, I think, during this G3. But you'll get that inner circle recordings, all the ones I've done. I'm on episode 107. So join Patreon, support the podcast. The podcasts that I put out there are bonus if you're a fan of the show. I really appreciate you guys that support me through Patreon.com. And thank you so much for everyone who is supporting Mom and Judy. They have a travel agency, the Travel and Tierras. Again, look at your phone app. Our emails are there. You can contact us and talk about your next trip to Disney World. Everybody wants to get on vacation and get, get away for a week or two. <laughs> go down to Florida. Go down to Disney World. Even if you're going to Universal Studios Orlando or if you're going to Disneyland, contact Mom and Judy and they will take care of you. And even if you book your trip yourselves, you can transfer that trip to Mom and Judy. They love hearing from you guys from the podcast. They'll talk all about Disney World, answer all of your questions, help you out booking those ADRs. And we really appreciate you guys that support their small business. Because we are committed to helping you enjoy your Disney World vacation. Just reach out to me. If you'd like to do a trip report, book a trip, plan your next trip. I'm at Kurt.Stone at Geekin on WW.com. I love hearing from you guys. I love the feedback. Thanks for going Geekin on Walt Disney World with us. We really appreciate you listening. Geekin with us every single day. We love you geeks. Have a magical day. And I hope all your dreams come true. <laughs>